What's up, fellow camera nerds? If you haven't seen any of my previous videos, my name is Cooper Natov and I'm a New York based DP and photographer. Adorama just sent me another sick lens from Sigma Sports Line that I can't wait to tell you about. This time it's their all new E mount 150 to 600 F5 to 63 Super Zoom. With such a massive focal range, I knew there was only one way to test this thing out, and that's by going on a safari. Unfortunately, the Serengeti is about 7,000 miles away and COVID is still very much a thing, so I just had to settle with a little trip to the zoo. I figured most reviews of this lens would be about its photo capabilities, so I wanted to do something a little different. I heard the optical stabilization in this lens was greatly improved over the previous model, so in this test, I tried the unthinkable and shot handheld video all the way up to 600 millimeters. With a zoom this long, I was able to get up close and personal with some truly incredible animals. It really made me feel like I was right in there with them. First thing you'll notice about this lens when you take it out of the box is the awesome carrying case it comes with. With the lens itself weighing just over six pounds, you'll be really glad you had it. Just like Sigma's other high-end lenses in their sports line, this lens was made in Japan and you can feel the quality and the care that was put into this design. And while it's fully metal construction adds a bit to the weight of the lens, it's absolutely worth it in terms of build quality because this is a lens you'll be able to count on for years to come. The next thing you'll notice when you get this thing out of the bag is all the built-in buttons and switches on the side. But first, let's talk about optical stabilization. With an aperture range of 5 to 6.3, this definitely isn't a super fast lens, so having a great optical stabilization system is super important. Fortunately, I was really impressed with the optical stabilization of this lens. Sure, I still got a little camera shake while zoomed in all the way to 600 millimeters, but I still couldn't believe how smooth it was. It was so smooth, in fact, that you'd have zero problems shooting stills even at slower shutter speeds. The switch on the side has two different modes for stabilization. Mode one is the general mode, and that'll be used by most people. Mode two is used when tracking a subject from side to side. This mode is great for like auto racing and sports, but since none of the animals were moving super fast, I didn't really get to play with it that much. If you're shooting on a tripod or just need to turn stabilization off for some other reason, you can also just switch it to the off position. The lens also has a customizable switch on the bottom with two different modes. Using the Sigma USB dock and the Sigma Optimization Pro software, you can actually create and import your own custom image stabilization settings right to the lens. Another switch you'll find on the side is the focus limiter, and it has three different settings. Basically, you can use this to speed up the autofocus of the lens if you know whether your subject is going to be inside or outside of 10 meters. So if you were, say, on a real safari and knew the animals would generally be further than 33 feet away, you could set the switch to the middle setting and it would help you grab focus even quicker. While the lens definitely focuses faster using these switches, I generally opted to keep it on the full setting because I was getting shots from both close up and far away. The next switch on the side is the zoom lock and it has three different modes. When sent to S mode, the zoom ring has the least amount of friction, but if left to hang upside down, the entire lens will extend out. T mode makes the zoom function a bit more difficult, but it will remain in place if pointed down. And finally, the lock mode, well, it locks it in place. The last switch on the side is your standard autofocus on and off switch. This came in handy a lot at the zoo because sometimes the lens would be searching for focus when it would get stuck on the fences rather than the animals behind them. The manual focus ring has a great feel though and was really easy to grab focus. You'll also notice that this lens has not one, not two, but three assignable buttons that can be customized in camera. I chose to map one of them to toggle APS-C mode. This meant that I could punch in on the full frame sensor even further and get my focal length equivalent to nearly a thousand millimeters. Another thing I thought was pretty cool on this lens was the tripod collar. With just a quick twist of a knob, the whole thing rotates and clicks nicely into place. This makes the transition between landscape and portrait shots super fast and easy. Speaking of fast, the collar also has a built-in tripod plate right on the bottom, so no wasting time moving your tripod plate back and forth between lenses. 
As important as all these features truly are, nothing is more important than the image quality, and this lens definitely doesn't disappoint. This lens has 24 elements and 16 groups, including two FLD and three SLD elements. Basically, that means this lens is sharper than any super zoom I've ever used. I was pleasantly surprised to find out that even wide open at 600 millimeters, I was able to get a super sharp image with no visible vignetting. That's really rare in these super zoom lenses. Just like the other lenses in Sigma Sports line, this lens is both splash and dust proof, so you don't have to worry about any inclement weather either. Between its incredible optical stabilization, loads of customizable features, super sharp image, and ridiculously long zoom, you should definitely consider this lens if you're in the market for a full frame super zoom. Just wanted to thank Adorama again for giving me the chance to test this bad boy out. They're always releasing awesome content, so don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and please let me know if you have any questions in the comments. Have a good one.